Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're talking about the iPhone 15 and the iPhone 15 Pro and why you might not need one. Apple just hosted their fall event where they announced the Apple Watch Series 9, the Apple Watch Ultra 2, and the iPhone 15 and the 15 Pro. Welcome to Apple Park. And at first glance, it seems like there's a lot of interesting and fun changes, but I'm here to tell you why you might not need to upgrade here. So here you can see the iPhone 15 and 14 lineup got the biggest differences highlighted here. You've got the dynamic island on the 15 Pro, 15 and 14 Pro. You've got the A17 Pro chip in the iPhone 15 Pro. You've got USB-C ports on both of the iPhone 15s. We'll talk about that a bit more. You've got an action button on the iPhone 15 Pro and you've got new cameras. So let's dive into each one of those. So first is dynamic Island. When I first saw Dynamic Island last year with the iPhone 14s, I was actually really impressed. I was so excited to be able to uh, navigate various different elements of apps UI up in the header and jump back to music or phone calls and things like that. But what I ultimately learned is that it just wasn't that useful. And I've watched other people who have iPhone 14s and they almost never use it. I would say 90% of the time they just jump into control center or into their notifications or things like that. I just struggle to actually see where Dynamic Island is valuable for me and the way that I use my iPhone. That might be different for you, but for me personally, I struggle to see the value of the Dynamic Island. Next, you've got the charging port. So there's a few interesting elements to this. So the lightning cable is dead. It's now USB-C. And while that means you can charge everything with one cable. You can do your laptop, your iPad, your phone, your Kindle, probably all your other devices use USB-C. But I would have you ask yourself the question, like is carrying one extra cable really that hard? If you've got an iPhone 14, 13, 12, is it really that hard to carry around one extra cable? For me, it's not. And so it's not a big enough reason to wanna to jump over to the new iPhone 15s. One of the really cool features though about the USB-C port is the ability to charge other Apple devices with power from your phone. So if you take a USB-C cable, plug it into your phone and you plug the other end into your AirPods or uh, your Apple Watch, you can actually charge those devices using your iPhone battery. That's pretty cool. The next one I wanna talk about is the action button. So. This is in the new iPhone 15 Pro, and Apple's actually giving you a lot of customizability with it. You've got the ability to turn on your ringer. You can set a focus mode. You can launch the camera, voice memos, flashlight, all kinds of things. But the most important actually is shortcuts. They didn't really talk about this that much, but when you have the ability to launch a shortcut with the action button, you can basically make that button trigger or do anything that you want. You could have it text a person. You could have it open an app. You could have it start a workflow that you do. There's a lot of power to assigning a shortcut to the action button, which is probably one of the most beneficial things about the iPhone 15 Pro. New in the iPhone 15 and iPhone 15 Pro are brand new cameras. So you've got a 48 megapixel main camera on both devices. But where it gets really interesting is with the telephoto lenses. So on the 15 Pro, you've only got a three times zoom, but on the 15 Pro Max, you actually get a five times optical zoom. So if you're someone that uses your phone a lot to take pictures of kids, take picture of nature, maybe you travel and your phone is the only camera that you take with you, there might actually be a very valid reason to upgrade for that alone. So am I upgrading to the iPhone 15? And the answer is no, because I still have my trusty iPhone 12. It might seem kind of funny, but the battery life is still incredible. I don't feel like I need the dynamic island. I don't feel like it's gonna be hugely valuable to me. And a lot of my Apple devices are actually older. So charging via USB-C cable from my phone to something else is actually not gonna benefit me. If you've got a lot of brand new Apple devices, then I could definitely see the value in moving up to the iPhone 15s. Every year, there's a new chip. They're always gonna say that the latest and greatest is better and incredible, and it's gonna change the way you use your phone. But for me personally, 
It's just not that big of a deal. My phone is plenty fast. The last thing is the camera on the iPhone. With 48 megapixels, your photos are gonna be a lot more high quality, but that also means that the file size is gonna be pretty large. And the thing about that is you need more storage. I already pay for Apple iCloud storage. I don't know that I necessarily want to move to one of the new plans and purchase six terabytes or 12 terabytes of storage. Notice that they didn't actually show the pricing there. That's just not something that I really feel like is a worthwhile upgrade. Why would I pay money to upgrade my phone and then also have to pay monthly just to store all of the photos that I'm gonna take? So that's just a few reasons why. I think the iPhone 15 lineup is actually really incredible and really powerful, but it's not right for me. It might be right for you, but that's all I got today. So thanks for checking out the channel. See you in the next one.